whatever, whenever that was. I think you're sitting in the lobby <laughs> doing another show, and uh, when you said to, leaned over to me and said, so what do you think <laughs> about Steel Magnolias? And I said... Huh, let me read it. Because my relationship to Steel Magnolias was what many people's relationship is. It's it's a movie, right? Mm-hmm. With Julia Roberts and Olympia Dukakis and mm-hmm. uh, Shirley MacLaine. And so you have all these, like, uh, sort of uh, Sally Fields. I mean, you have this, like, sort of iconic view mm-hmm. of, of this, um, this play. And then I went back and read it, and I thought, oh... Oh, I didn't remember that was in there. Oh, I didn't remember that, I, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't remember that. And because it was a play before right. it was a movie, it was a play before it was a movie, which is, which is often the case. Yes, and people don't know that. But um, and we get a little starstruck, right? We get kind of attached to personas. Yeah. But when you strip that away and you look at this play, and the way that I'm approaching it, and that we've discussed is is really looking at these women in a sort of a re- more real world, as opposed to a nostalgic world. Yes. Of Louisiana and this small town, which is based on Robert Harling's um, uh, experience with his sister who passed away um, from diabetes and and sort of was a tribute to her and her life. But when you sort of take that piece, not away, but you kind of set it to the side Mm -hmm. and you say, who are these women? What does it look like to be in a community in um, in Louisiana in a smallish town? Um, we're not talking New Orleans, right? <laughs> right. Um, and how we build community and the way that I'm approaching it being that we're looking at a diverse um, ensemble, a, dis- a diverse uh, place. So our Truvy, our um, beauty shop our, uh, owner is black. Um, Malin and Shelby, the mother-daughter, are black. Mm-hmm. And then we have... Um, these two older white women, Weezer and Clary, who have some money, have some agency mm-hmm. in their lives, yep. right? Um, and then we have an L who is Asian um, and is uh, coming, uh, probably Vietnamese, mm-hmm. um, who, what there's actually a large population in Louisiana of Vietnamese. Yes. So, but people don't think of that, right? They think Louisiana, they think black and white, right? Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to come into a community and figure out how you belong and whether mm. you belong and how you see this community? And so I'm really interested in that from from sort of NL's perspective of like showing up in a place that where Truvy says, OK, I'll, I'll take you. I'll teach you what I know. I see you need my help. Mm-hmm. Let me see what I can do. And c- providing sort of a space, a safe place for her. But then she also gets to observe how this community works right. and I was thinking about it as um, in the last uh, few weeks about I think one of the beautiful things right now is that those communities are happening all over the country but we don't realize that they're happening mm. because mm-hmm. what is actually happening in our in in our sort of um, uh, sound bites and all these things is that there is so much divisiveness, yes. right? And there is so much polarization. And it's not to say that I want these each one of these women to come with their own set of history, right? Mm-hmm. So they're showing up with their as as I put these specific actor bodies in these specific roles. They say different things. Yes. And that is really, really important. It's very conscious. And so their bodies and the way that these lines and these, and these um, uh, interactions happen are through the experiences that this woman would have had. But that is also true that it doesn't mean that we don't have communities where we have different backgrounds and we are together and we find ways to connect and to bridge the things that maybe are our beautiful differences, which I think is really important. Yeah. Difference is important, um, and it's important to be celebrated, but also the way that these women connect across those things through weddings, through food, um, through tragedy, yes. you know? Through yes, and through laughter. And through laughter. I mean, all <laughs> yes. of it. I mean, and I was thinking about, like, what are the spaces that we do this? And I was thinking about hmm. oh, church. 
Mm-hmm. Like you might have that person that drives you batty, but you still love them and you will still go to <laughs> bat for them. But they drive you crazy because they <laughs> always bring the same thing or they, they, you know, they, they're really nitpicky about the way the chairs go together. Or maybe you talking you, about you, Weezer, I may be <laughs> a little obsessive to me. Weezer is the person when your garbage can falls over and the garbage falls out. She's very, very upset. And she's watching out the window until you pick it up and turn it right and clean it up. And if you don't do that, you will hear from her by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That is my, uh, my idea. We, all know, we all know that person. We all have somebody like that in our neighborhood, we right? Do. We do. I had a Greek neighbor across the street from me and he was uh, the small Greek man. He was about 90 years old. He was 93 when he passed. And he used to watch over our house. Um, mm-hmm. And his house kind of faced our house. And he would come over all the time. And he, you'd start sweeping, uh, you know, raking leaves. And he'd come over there and kind of mansplain to you and, like, rake up your leaves for you, right? <laughs> but then talk to you. And he'd always say, I don't care if you are black, you are white. You are good people, you are bad people, right? <laughs> he would say it to me over and over again. I started kind of like, okay, okay. But there was something really special. We came mm-hmm. from, he was in World War II yeah. as a Greek Navy operator. And here I am in a black queer woman uh, with my little family, you know, mm-hmm. and here, and we're like, like light years apart. But we found these like beautiful moments. His wife would send over cookies and say, thank you. I would go over there and, you know, turn off the stove. If like, there was like, you know, some probably couldn't figure out how to turn the cleaning, the stove cleaning on, Right. you know, I love so that. That's what's real. Yeah. That's what's real. And that's that is real. what interconnection is about. Yes. And that's what this season was about yeah. for us was how can we make the connections between cultures? How right. can we. Uh, say we're celebrating our differences and our uniquenesses, but also where we interconnect. Yes. And sisterhood is mm-hmm. a big piece of, of of Steel Magnolias. Yes. And the relationship between Fanny and that is mm-hmm. giving women voice and saying, well, not giving them voice, mm-hmm. just creating a platform to hear those voices yes. and to see how those, uh, how women are... St- Standing up for each other and interconnecting with each yes. other. And I love the way you're casting uh, Steel Magnolias, what we talked about from the beginning, yeah. and, and you did it. Um, <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's exciting to see how we're going to hear yeah. new things yes. in that piece yes. because of that. Yes. Through and it was really that. important to me. I said, you know, I, I told you this. I, I have to do it. It has to make sense to me. Mm-hmm. It has to make sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to me, if I don't see a world that that interests me and that allows people to be their full selves, yes. right, yes. and their unique selves, and how those those uh, connect, then like then that's what's interesting to me, and mm-hmm. that's what's exciting to me. That's where we can be specific, and we can really show that it is okay to see things through a different lens. Yes. It's completely okay and and important that we acknowledge that. And then it's also important to see how we can connect to one another, how we can cry together, how we can laugh together. And then hopefully everyone in this play, actually, which I think is similar about Fanny, is there's a transformation, which is like the key. I mean, maybe it sounds, um, you know, I don't know, regular, but I just really believe that theater for me has to be about transformation, not only for myself, for the actors on stage and for the audience. Absolutely. It's just for the audience. It's not enough. It's just for the actors. It's not enough. Yes. It has to be all of us. And it's really a ter- transformative art. So in this sort of journey that we hopefully are taking or about to, that, that I pulled this beautiful group of people together. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited about this cast that I just, I really think that if we go deep enough, like I believe in diving to the deepness of the well that allows you also to have the laughter, right? Yeah. yeah. And you have to have kind of both. If you kind of just go for here, then we kind of can like toss it aside. It doesn't sit with us. It doesn't mm-hmm. hold in our heart, right? Yes. And if we don't go, you know, if we just go to the depth, then we feel like tied down and we can't figure out how we move forward. That's right. Out of it, right? 
And, and so it's really that balance, um, mm-hmm. and that humanity that I think is really important. So I think all of these characters, like Fanny found her voice and sort of transformed. I feel like that's a lot of that in Steel Magnolias too. Mm-hmm. I mean, we always think about like Shelby and her journey, which is very sad, um, but also triumphant. Yes. Also triumphant, um, and beautiful, but we also see like Clary finds this you know a moment to like be um like back to herself as a Mm -hmm. widower you know so how do we how do we move through life how do we find new things how do we see weezer like soften up a little bit and Mm -hmm. like find potential love (laughs) you know um Mm -hmm. and become out of her comfort zone after i think years and years of routine 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 um we see malin like let go a little bit Mm-hmm. You know, we see Anel find, you know, a, a home and and love and, and a calling. Yes, a you true know, calling. A true yeah. calling. And, and yes. you know, so all, I think, in the little way facilitated by Truvy, who's like our home. You yeah, know? she's created this incredible home. That's why yeah. these women are there, because yeah. she has this amazing beauty shop. But it's a, not just about the hair, yeah. which is there. It's not just about beauty. It's actually about community. Yes. It's about where you can come and let your hair down, yep. where you can come and and really lay your own stuff out on the table yeah. and know that you're in a safe environment. Yeah. And or not sometimes but sometimes. but 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 more so. but, but, more but, so. but yeah. in the end you know there's a there's a lot of love there i think yeah. um a lot of love yeah in that yeah and i think it's like you know it's like i don't know kind of go into your auntie's house and <laughs> you know sometimes it's you know a good time and sometimes it's a hard time and but you also know that there's always going to be coffee <laughs> and yes. there'll be some cookies somewhere and um, and it's okay if you fall apart a little bit, yes. you know. And I think that that's, um, I think that's really important. We all we all need that, you know. Yes. And I just really I, I love how you said like I think just hearing things. I think all of the shows this season, it's like each one is allowing you to hear something or or see something a little different yes. that you haven't. Um, you know, I was thinking about distinct. We're not talking about that, but distinct society, you know, again, sort of across these bridges, right. And trying to figure out, and I think Mm -hmm. sometimes bridges can sound very, um, like, oh, it's all wrapped up and nice and neat, um, which I'm not interested in. Like I, I, Elizabeth Carter, as an artist, am not interested in perfect packages and and bows. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in messy and complex and beautiful and human Mm -hmm. and I feel like that really fits in with all of these shows it's like an opportunity it's a beautiful opportunity to see how we can hold ourselves and we can also hold other people yes um yes and stay connected as best we can knowing that we're all like carrying different things Yes. Oh, so well said. That's 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 exactly the theater works experience yeah. and the theater works season that I wanted to put together this year yeah. because of how much division there is. Because we keep getting told how you know no one can get along. We're watching political divide. We're actually witnessing some some real uh, attacks on our democracy and on that. Mm-hmm. But theater is a democratic space it's a it's like the ultimate equalizer mm-hmm. it says everyone's voice is welcome mm-hmm. all, people from all backgrounds are welcome to come into this space and humanity and the human spirit is mm-hmm. what lifts us all together mm-hmm. and to see these characters that are struggling with whatever they're struggling with in the play mm-hmm. and to see people reaching out to other people across mm-hmm. cultures across genders mm-hmm. across uh, po- political divides and say, literally, literally, uh, literally, literally uh, borderlines. Yes, borderlines, right, <laughs> right. Like, and just saying no. We and we can do this. This is what America is. This is what the American experiment is supposed to be. And it's for me what what theater does best is mm-hmm. help people get into other people's shoes. Yep. And 
you know, your play, Steel Magnolias, we really get to see that. We're going to really see that and feel that. Yeah. And I love that you're going deep in order to get to the, the humor of that also, because that's what human beings do. Yeah. When we're in the midst of the most tragic things or the most difficult things, we find humor as a way to survive that. Oh. And that's why that play is so funny. Right, right. No, that's exactly what we do. I mean, uh, you know, I think we've all experienced that, you know, in the lowest of your lows and you find yourself laughing and you think, I'm crazy, I shouldn't be laughing at this. But you, you have to because it's part of, like, how you're able to be resilient. Absolutely. You know, is to have some humor. But I really think, I mean, I've really been thinking about this. I think that our country right now we're seeing so much um you know so much uh strife and and things that are really need to be wrestled with like very mm-hmm. much need to be wrestled with so there's this overarching you know um issues and our democracy and like and you know tension over all sorts of things race class um you know uh, drag shows which is absurd yeah. to me um at the same time, there's also these little beautiful pockets. And it's not even, I think everyone has these places. And I, I keep thinking about, about that. It just keeps coming back to me where we may think of ourselves of this is our community, right? Mm-hmm. And someone may say, this is my community. But there's all these places where in a very real way, our communities are constantly overlapping and we are creating smaller, unique communities yes. all over the place. Like my theater community is a community made up of a million different people from a million different backgrounds. Um, and my own personal, you know, my neighborhood, you know, looks a certain way. My this, So like, I think that it's interesting that we don't really think about that that much. I mean, Mm -hmm. some people maybe have very homogenous, you know, communities, and then maybe you have a community at work where you're like, oh, we would never be friends except that we work together and we laugh when we're in the break room. So, like, what is that? What is that thing? And that's human. That's being human. Mm -hmm. Um, And what we can learn from, from those experiences. So I'm just really... I'm thrilled. I can't wait to get in the room. It's coming up so soon. Yes, it's it is. exciting. So the design, you know, you, you working with the design team yeah. to create this world yeah. of that. You know, I mean, the Fanny world was very mm. much a projected wor- world because yeah. we were trying to bring in the the '60s and yeah. and uh, and civil rights imagery and. Uh, to put her in a church and to put her in different environments that could just kind of instantly happen Mm because she's and it it follows her life and 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 her music um but this is really a singular location very different um different. uh, and a little different cultural take on that Yes, and some of the because some of the when i we did a little research and so the, the town um uh in Seal Magnolias is fictional. Mm-hmm. There is no real right. town of latchery, whatever. Um, there is actually, though, some towns that are sort of similar. And I had the, the beautiful gift of having um, my AD uh, on the last show that I directed before I came back was actually from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And so we were chatting, and I was like, okay, what would a black woman who's probably men, you know, she's not upper class. She's like, it's like I think this is a borderline community. This is mm-hmm. bordering an, you know, uh, an upper middle class um, neighborhood meeting sort of a middle class neighborhood that's maybe more diverse. So there it's, we're not sort of set in this very wealthy, you know, neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's somebody's garage that's been converted. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's really like that Truvy is a self-made woman. Mm-hmm. She, she got her business. She, you know, started to got better. She fixed things up so that everything is, is hers. It is personal. Mm-hmm. It's on her home turf. It's like literally people come to her because she's so good at it. But these are not... This isn't super cuts. Yeah, this is not (laughs) super cuts. This is like... And there are a lot... There are so many of these kinds of 
of beauty shops yeah. around the country, right? Where somebody has a back room and everybody just knows to go there. Right. Because it's the good place. That's yes. where you get your, your, that's where you get your best braids. That's where you get, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've been really like interested in how Truvy caters to all these different women, you know, and has the big posters up on the walls and all that stuff. And she's probably gotten, and she's savvy. So she's like, I got this thing from here, but that place is going out of business. And so I got this and, you know, and it's that she likes, yeah, it's a little eclectic. There's like a lot of, you know, she likes color, you know, it is the eighties, but I'm not trying to go like your sort of stereotypical eighties, mm -hmm. you know, um, but more like somebody who would really like have made their own space that, that they feel comfortable in. Yes. And also that it is part of her home and this is not a super fancy home. It's not a, it was really important to me that it's not like some of the beautiful Victorians that happen and, you know, or it, that it's really like a house that has brick and is kind of a middle income house. Like that's a nice house for her, like that yeah. she has achieved something and, but it is not fancy. Mm -hmm. And that was really important to me. Um, because I think that it says something also about Clary and Weezer and why they come here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it isn't, it isn't your fancy salon. And, you know, so, and I also wanted similarly, like the clothing to feel very sort of real, real woman of that time too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way where you can like kind of do a nod and it can be just, you know, completely, you know, a time capsule that's like, um, of all the best of like the eighties. Right? right. You know, and you can do it that way. Um, and then you can kind of go a little more real, you mm -hmm. know, which is what Love I'm that. interested in. Um, so like, how can we have all these little things and, and that there's all, I mean, this is probably the a, one of only a handful of like really realistic plays that I've gotten to direct. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's fun. It's like a playground for actors. It's like, Oh, this magazine and I have this and I have these little things and there's a sink and then there's the nail station. And like, what is all of those things and how do, yes. how do they pick and how do they interact with those things and how can it be specific to them and the world that they're creating? And that's really fun it's really fun to like play on a place like that when you get the opportunity to be at a place like theater works, which, you know, is able to make such beautiful environments, you mm. know, mm -hmm. um, cause I love doing abstract stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like I, that is kind of my jam, but this is like really fun. It's good. That's, it's, it's great. Well, we yeah. have a great costume shop and, yes. and Chris Fitz are doing props this is a big prop show it's a big prop we got wigs <laughs> we got props i'm a little like let me tell you if you want to know the things i'm nervous about is washing women's hair on stage i gotta figure that mm -hmm. one out well i don't know anything about that <laughs> <laughs> but no well i know a black great. woman's wash day is like a significant mm -hmm. thing you no, know i know that it'll take you take you all morning <laughs> um it's not a what we're not a wash and go um but it's real I mean, yeah. like, what do you do with all these things? So, like, that's fun to figure out, though. And mm -hmm. I'm a big person. Like, I just love living on my edge. That's what I like. Well. You know. Here you go. Here I go. No. I can't wait. Oh, uh, I look I'm so good. thrilled you're working on this piece. I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to the party. And, yeah, TheaterWorks has always been a special place for me. You know, I, I worked here many, many years ago as an actor. Um, and it's, it's great to be coming back.